Yo, what is good, world? It's your boy, Calvin Leroy King, the third. And as always, I have my lovely co hosts with the most of on my side, Miss Reese PC, the one and only. What up, y'all? And we thank y'all for tuning in and turning up for another dope episode of This, That, and the Third, the lifestyle show that gives you life. Literally. Literally. Now, we're going to begin the show in the best fashion we know how. And that's beginning with some new news for all y'all new news. So, uh, Miss Reese, stay woke. What you mean? Stay woke. Well, first. First, I want to t- talk about, we just interviewed uh, Alderman Leslie Harrison. We had a dope, exclusive interview right? with Alderwoman Leslie Harrison. Of the Fifth Ward, the Fifth South, Ward. Shore South Shore area oh, that man. expands. You right? know what it is. It's growing and going. <laughs> well, no, it yeah. expands. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> so, um, And she talked to, talked to us about a, a lot of different things that she has going on. Yeah. Um, one coming up with the the runoff right yeah um april 2nd so go vote and Stay then woke. she talked about the theater project that's yeah. happening right on 71st and jeffrey come on son like it's gonna be booming over here like bill street it's a theater it's a bowling, bowling alley. alley probably arcade they be having restaurants yeah all that restaurants, type shit. i mean it looks really nice that downtown um, feel right here on the south side oh uh, that's gonna be great i don't yeah. have to go far so we, we just want to shout out to uh yeah. alderman harrison and everything that she's doing and encourage every Everyone that is in the Fifth Ward and just in Chicago in general to, to stay woke and go vote on vote. April 2nd. Yep. All right. Now we're going to begin with some new news for all y'all new news. Beginning so, with yeah. stay woke. Stay woke. So I, I don't know if you guys remember, but Stefan Clark was shot back in 2017, I believe. Black cow, cow, cow. Who is that? Why do you do that? Because that's the sound <laughs> a gun makes. Black cow, black cow, black cow, okay. cow. So he was shot. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I like G.I. Joe's growing up. Okay, anyway, um, he was shot in Oakland, right? Okay. He was the guy that was running. Apparently, he had vandalized right, some cars, and he was running, and he ended up in his grandmother's backyard, and they shot him in the back. I he had the him. cell phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, they shot him like four, well, it's like 20 shots that went off, but he got hit four to six times, I want to say. Terrible. Um, well, the police officers in that case are not being charged. At all. And so that just came out, and so it's like an uproar and things, and just... Listening to that case kind of took me back because sometimes I think when we hear case after case after case, right, we get so, oh, yeah, I'm mad, yeah. let's do something. And then when we don't hear anything or see any videos for Anybody a while, kill somebody? we think <laughs> that maybe it's not happening, nothing's going on, and that's not the case. So I just wanted us to, like, stay woke and not be distracted by Trump shenanigans, yeah. right? And or just, Jesse or Ara. Yeah, well, none of this bullshit. Well, said, I keep thinking Jesse Jackson. No, Jesse, I should but, say Jesse. Yeah, like we we still be in tune in your community and what's going on. That's all I wanted to say with that. And, and I also want to add to that that my man out in, I want to say he's in Houston. Maybe want, he might he's somewhere in that southwest, okay. you know, by southwest type shit. And he said that you know I had the pleasure of speaking with his 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 young male group that comes. Probably 30, 40 minutes early to school, Mm -hmm. gets breakfast and enrichment through his program. And uh, I spoke with them maybe two weeks ago now via Skype. And one of the young brothers, two days later, father got killed by a police officer in that Houston or Arizona. I don't know exactly where they stay, but they stay in that region. Okay. And um, no news coverage, no press, no national coverage. Like, it still happens. Yeah. Yeah. And we just have turned a blind eye to it. When it does happen, we think that it's... uh, uh, normal, we yeah. normalize it and things like that. And I don't know if there's any end in sight for that bullshit, man. And, but I, I do know this, and I, I don't want to say you know who to vote for or anything like that in this upcoming Chicago mayoral election. But I, I did see a post that really struck a chord with me, and it said, "How are we gonna get mad at somebody that votes 100 percent of the time with the current mayor and say no, no shame on you, but then we don't say anything about somebody that's voted 95 percent plus time." on saying that this police corruption or this killing or this incident uh, was unfounded or no no uh, recourse for it. So it's kind of like, uh, what do we do with that information as well? Because that's what we're facing at this point is like when we had Trump and Hillary, like the less of two evils almost. So what do you say? Like I say, I say stay woke on the issues. That's all I'm saying. Blue or gray? Is that what we say? Man, who we going with? Is blue, blue or who we gray? Or gray? Blue. Because you know she saying? wears blue suits all the time. Yeah, I'm just saying vote. <laughs> you know, I've been seeing a lot of people, men in particular, with the Tony Preckwinkle hairdo. <laughs> like I go to grocery stores and I look and see, like I don't know if they're doing this on purpose <laughs> or you know what I'm saying. If they just always had it, now I notice it. But nevertheless, April second, Chicago, stand up, go vote. All right. Um. Okay. Next. 
I forgot to talk about this last week, y'all. But what the hell is going on with Momo? Have oh. you heard about this? Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's how she. <laughs> She you know what she, the grudge. It kind of reminds me of the grudge. Reminds me of the grudge. It reminds me of the nightmare before Christmas. Yeah. And it reminds me of all of that. Tim and Burton it's a shit. it's a character in Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice as well. Yeah. When, uh, <laughs> no, I was gonna say Wednesday from the Adams family. Yeah. A little bit. Violet from she's, Incredibles. She's creepy. Weird ass. Weird ass face. Right. So lady. this chick Momo um, is a cartoonish character that's popping up on YouTube Kids and regular YouTube on particular videos that your kids may be watching, right? Uh -huh. So when she pops up, it's kind of, in one video that I saw, she had like the um, black and white the hypnotizing oh, thing going. Shit. And so what she does, she, she teaches kids how to commit suicide. She tells them or advises them to go turn on the stove with gas or everybody's sleeping. She teaches them how to stick stuff into the outlets. Um, and then she says, if you tell your parents, if you tell anybody, I'm going to come kill you. This bitch is like, who was like that? Was was it wasn't Chuck? Chuck, I was gonna Chuck, say Chucky. Chuck, well, yeah, he used to tell Chuck me. Chuck used, yeah, used, used to threaten. threaten. Yeah, he used to threaten. That nigga was that used to be like, I kick your Chucky, ass. Chucky, you little know fuck, son. If you don't have that knife, nigga, I'm murking your ass. But I heard about this recently too. Um, shout out to Mook and Schmook and. They, they put me on, man. Whoop wasn't with the sis. He was like, no, I'm not even going to show you what it is because I don't want to no. get me. Callie was like, well, here it is. Let's watch it together. I'm like, Callie, you got a curse. <laughs> oh, Z, like, what the fuck, Z? But it's real. No. They said somebody in Australia or Austria or, or Up to 130 deaths have been related oh, to her. Shit, I thought it was one. No. This bitch. And so I showed Nehemiah. He might was like, oh, no, I can't mm -hmm. even look. He couldn't even look they at it. They said the kids, if you mention it, they panic. First of all, they're in fear. Like, how you know? It's like you Bloody Mary when we it's was little. like Bloody Mary. Yeah. Candyman. Candyman. You can't Candyman. say it. Yeah. yeah. You know, Candyman in Chicago, Bloody Mary. And I showed, so I asked Noah. <laughs> Noah was like, Mom, no. No, I can't talk about it. I'm like, I kick her ass. Tell me what, what's going on, right? What's up? So he begin to explain to me that she pops up in a, a video that he normally watch cray cray right some guy who right. like goes on adventures and shit like that <laughs> apparently she popped on one of his videos hey, Noah. and was like i'm gonna kill cray cray and I just some weird cray -cray stuff and, and day day <laughs> <laughs> but he was scared and you if you tell your mom Lorencia, yeah, he was scared he was scared to even like talk about it Duh. so i can only you imagine sure, I can only imagine how a lot of these kids nah. are feeling. And you can't block it. It's like it's not like you nah, can that shit like a virus, block. Z, that you shit. can't. <laughs> yeah, you can't. Watch that. Nigga, out. Move. Yeah. Fuck. I'll beat the shit out of that little puppet bird body, white yeah. girl face, no brush <laughs> in the household. Nigga, fuck you, Momo. Yeah. Square up, bitch. So but at the end of the day, picture. protect y'all kids, man, because they believe in That's that tough. shit, G. And <clears throat> it's unfortunate, but I think it's just a... a a teaching moment. Yeah. It's a teaching moment to get more involved in what your kids are consuming digitally. And then also let them know, like, that shit fake as hell, dog. But then there are some kids that believe it so much that obviously almost 200 motherfuckers have taken their lives yeah. or hurt themselves. So stay woke. Okay. Uh, next, major moves hey. are being made by Jay-Z and Will Smith. Hey. They are partnering up um, to produce an Emmett Till miniseries on oh. HBO. Why you say no? I said, oh. Oh, I thought Tell you said no. Fuck. I think I liked that earlier because I saw that and was like, damn, that collab is long. Dude. Well, I and. I see Will Smith playing Jay-Z in his biopic. Yeah. I see that. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that's a force to be reckoned with. And I just wanted to, to, to follow on that last week how we talked about, you know, some circles, the Kardashians just will never be able to enter. You're not invited. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? And the fact that Jay and Will, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's clout. They have major connections. They both own production companies, and they're oh, putting this cloud together. Chasers. That's cloud. Yeah, so That's what stay you're chasing tuned there. Um, to HBO to see when the series come out. And Emmett Till just, you know, the the, the stance that his mom took. It was yeah. like, now nah, y'all going to see what y'all did. What y'all did to my baby. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And the fact that Shorty came out. Lied. Like, Yo, I was bullshitting. Like, Shorty was on her deathbed like, hey! what? You just changed black history, dog. Yeah. And nothing happened Change. to this lady. Nope. Nothing happened to this lady. Nope. And everybody's so quick to say because of the, let me not say Jesse, but Jesse situation <laughs> that, oh, man, now they're not going to believe gay people when uh, no. actual hate crime happens. They're not going to believe black people when racism happens. They never did. 
they never <laughs> stopped believing white women when this bitch came out and said she was a lying ass white woman. Yeah. So what? How is it not the same? We should never believe a white woman when she yells, you know, no, cries you should. for help. You should question that shit. You should question it all the time, right? Yeah. But again, it's just, it's just weird. Let's just say that. But we know where we're at. This is America. So to follow up on the Smiths, right? So last Friday, Red Table Talk mm -hmm. had Jordan Woods come to the table. It and did. I was tuned in. I did not know she was thicker than a sticker. Uh, very pretty. When she, I very pretty. pretty. I said thicker than yeah, I'm she's trying, pretty. I'm trying to soften oh, up okay. for our uh, female sorry. viewers. Yes, okay. I'm sorry, ladies. <laughs> she's hey, ladies. very pretty. But no, she is beautiful. Yeah. She is beautiful. But I did see former pictures where she was. You know, she was, dog. Like, when did she lose so all so the weight? So maybe she lost weight. Yeah, damn. She was huge. <laughs> She was huge after her. Well, when you live in that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got to yeah. lose weight. You ain't going to. Yeah, yeah. But how did you ever get to the point where you needed to lose weight? I felt, I felt like. Sometimes maybe so that baby that fat got. didn't oh, fall off. Shorties? No, I'm just saying. No, I'm saying. Oh, she was up, a fat baby. I'm just saying. No, I don't no. know. <laughs> <laughs> We're guessing on this and the third. Right. Okay, hey, what's to the story? So, <laughs> Jordan Woods states her case. Right. And in the very beginning, she um, will FaceTimes in because he's shooting Bad Boys 3. Great guy, man. And he says, I knew we would be here one day. Before she was born. And I know how hard it was for you and your family when he passed. And I was watching you grow and become a woman. And I had a deep sense that we would be here one day. And what I want to say to you is that the world attacks. It just happens. You'll never get around the world attacking. But I want you to know that you are supported, and I got you, and we got you. Yeah, and that means the world to me. One day. Man, you just know. The fact that he said that, no, it ain't that he just know. But when you hang out with certain people, mm -hmm. you just know you're going to be involved in some shit. Mm -hmm. And it but seems you like let the them go. No, let the baby go and do her thing and come on home. Shit. Be here. Warm embrace for that prodigal daughter. So basically what she said is, she got invited to his house at the time. Tristan. Yeah, at the time it was a group of girls. She didn't know it was his house so she till she got there. Yeah. Got there, seen him like, oh, okay, cool with somebody I know, I'm mm -hmm. familiar with. Not a problem. So they drinking, kicking it, hanging out. She, I think she was being honest. She really had no damn reason to lie. Because we know Tristan is a cheater. Mm. Okay, so even if she is did. Is Tristan married? No, but he just had Can't a baby a by Chloe. Can't be a cheater. Okay, so we'll get into that, right? We'll get into that. If he can't be a cheater, then Chloe should get over her feelings. See why people would say, oh, they're getting cozy. Mm-hmm. Did you have your arm around him? No. Okay. But my legs were, were laying right over his. Got it. Okay. My butt was never sitting on him. But your legs were, so he but was. But my legs were dangling down, so I picked them up and I put them over. To, to, to onto his legs. Onto the bottom of his legs, yes. Onto the bottom of his mm -hmm. legs. There's stories that she was sitting on his lap. She was dangling in his, his crotch area. She, that is not the truth. But if you're looking for a story, I can understand why that would be the story. Right. So there wasn't any like intimate little chuckle, chuckle, giggle, giggle, you in his ear, him in your ear. I mean, as we all were just dancing and having fun, everyone at the party, so we're in this person's ear, this person, but never anything intimate. Never anything like... And he didn't make any moves on you throughout the night? No. Good. Okay. He didn't try to take me to a room. He didn't try to... We were all... It was just an innocent time. But you could see how that could seem. And that's where I will take responsibility to where I can't be doing that. Right. Right. Especially with even... the partner of a woman who considers you a sister and they already exactly. have. Because there's so much history involved. Yeah. I wasn't thinking right. Yeah. That's, I take full responsibility for that. It's Callie. When she left, he went in to kiss her. Mm. Who's wrong? His ass is wrong. It ain't got nothing to do with that girl. Like, mm. your, your man kissed me. Mm. Check his ass. So, how did word get out about this shit in the first? People at the party, oh, okay. like, and then that's what so she said. So-called friends. 
That's what she said. She realized that those friends she thought were her friends are not. Ooh, this is my way to get in with Cloud them. chasers, you mm -hmm. hang out with the Kardashians, you are part of the Smith family. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to be close to you. Wow. And I think she's learning the hard way. But the simple fact, she's young. She has no kids. Girl, and you ain't married to nobody. And that ain't Chloe's husband. So yeah. I saw text, I saw tweets from Chloe on Twitter. You know, I had to come for her just because. Uh. Eurisi. Yes, because with the I Moses. felt like getting involved. Nothing needs to be said. <laughs> I had to tell Chloe, when you mess with a fuck boy, this is what you get. You get mm. fucked. Mm. Period. Boy. He did that shit in front of you on Instagram. You were, everybody saw, right, while she was pregnant. What made you think he was going to stop? I never changed. So, I don't even want to talk about that no more. Cause nah, but I, I will say this. I believe there too. And I didn't watch. I saw a clip that mm -hmm. said, like, Every single lie that Jussie told during his interview with Robin Roberts. And, you know, you can dissect. Yeah. Oh, my eyes are shifting. My body yeah. language. And you can tell. Shorty seemed like she was telling the fucking She truth. was hurt. Like, she there was no reason to say that shit. And it'd be a lie as well. Yeah. I'm like, all right. I believe her, right? California lifestyle. Yeah. I think motherfuckers partying. Partying, drink, kicking, she and hanging. She didn't mention the coke. She didn't mention the coke. But I, I, I want to venture and say there was probably coke involved. <laughs> or eggs or something. <laughs> Uh, she kept that out, though, but, you know, good PR. I, I just think that, one, she, she told her side. She owned the narrative, and, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Um, the fact that she kept going back to the, I'm willing to get on a lie detector, boom. Um, the fact that she was like, you know, I've spoken with, you know, the Kardashians and whatever, whatever, and, you know, I'm more than willing to make amends to make her feel good and blah, blah, blah. And, again, I just think that it's not very far-fetched. If I'm Tristan Thompson's cheating ass, and I got bitches at the crib, and bitches is finna leave. I'm probably finna kiss said bitches in the mouth or somewhere all of more them. private before they depart. Just to let them know, I see you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for coming. Thanks and, for And it's out. even more alluring to a nigga knowing, like, oh, and you the little sister friend? Come here, give me some of that sugar. Ah! Niggas is like that. Let's not act like we're trash. brand new here, dog. He has nothing to look forward to in the NBA. He's on the cast. No LeBron. Yeah. Smooches. Yeah, I guess. Well, anyway. Well, when you lay down with trash, Chloe, that's what you get. Yeah, get up with recyclable goods. Okay. What's going on with uh music, man? Now, let me just say this. There's some heavy albums that have dropped recently. I'm going to go with 2 Chains. Yeah, have you heard 2 Chains? Yeah, yeah. That's well, we got to get to 2 Chains. Okay. Have you heard that T-Pain? No. T-Pain. I'm not going to say it's good, but I'm going to say it's, it's, it's on par with what you would expect from T-Pain. Okay. He's been gone since the right, yeah. which was like, oh, wait. Okay. So he done took an 11-year hiatus. And then Solange. Ah, uh, did you see her did. videos on the pole? I have not. Hmm. You might want to see I those. Seen her in the video Solange since she was is, uh, kicking the shit with Jay Z. No, 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 no. she ain't quit. She's mm. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> Busting the door before a real nigga. So okay. Solange has resurged Black Planet. Remember yeah, Black Planet? Yeah, I heard that, man. So I went on there today. I heard. No, nah, I'm thinking of MySpace. Justin Timberlake bought MySpace. Yeah, nobody cares about MySpace yeah. or Justin Timberlake's ass. Black Planet was the original social media outlet, it right? It taught you how to code. And it was for black people. It was so for So it us, was by all us. of us on there. Yes. Um, and it's still, I went on there today, Whoa. live and well. You went on there like logged into your old. No, I didn't log oh. in, but I did go I and know see. your username and password. Now, that's what I was thinking. I, I think I was like. Do you remember? Red 12, 12. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> hell no. Okay. It was so, on there. It's updated. It was modern. like people were just chatting. You mm. could just see the profile pics. You got to check it out because it's, well, I'm Is sure a lot of y'all don't even know. I looked for the app. It wasn't an app. I had to go to blackplanet.com. I think that's actually com. cool to keep it non-appy. Yeah, so it's not, you're not cool. glued to it. Yeah. So anyway, she released her a couple of her tracks and like visuals for them okay. on black planet so y'all okay. check it out now is she like an equity owner or why black planet like why is i she... think she was trying to buy into it mm. or she did buy into it i'm yeah. not sure um but she basically said she wanted to go back to where she started yeah, from you yeah. know what i'm saying she started on black planet a lot yeah, of us yeah. Black, Black Planet was Planet first, before was Facebook, way, before MySpace, uh, before any like of that. 99. Yeah. 98 even, man. Like Black And the Planet. creator, his name is Stanford Grad Omar mm -hmm. Wasau, right? He <laughs> created it in 1999. 
Um, it was the earliest places uh, people could creatively express their blackness online, yeah. right? And it shocked the tech world at that time because it was obviously before MySpace, Facebook, and Twitter. Yeah, and I was just looking at a post about um, just our, our ability to spark, mm -hmm. right? And our ability to create waves. And it was, this was pertaining to the do-rag. It was like a group of white boys with do-rags on talking about, I'm trying to get my waves together. And it was just kind of like, damn, we, uh, you know, y'all culture vultures, y'all jacking our swag, da da da. Yeah. But then on the flip side, it was kind of like, well, shit, we're kind of like very creative people, and we kind of create everything. So we should almost take it as, like, what they say, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. flattery. It's like, shit, like, don't be mad with motherfucking swagger jack. Find a way to monetize your swag, and then you won't be so blue about That's it. That's it. Monetize yeah. it. But Black and Planet definitely was everything that Facebook has become. And yeah. it was just the spark. And it was just for us. Found out how to monetize that shit. Now, that shit revolutionized yeah. the world. Not yeah. just communication, not just social media. But let's take it back to Black Planet. Okay? Straight like that. Um, okay, next. Things to watch. A couple of new things you all should check out. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I don't know how new this is. The Adventures of Mr. and Pete. Have you seen that? Never heard of it. <laughs> so it was a little movie I caught on HBO, y'all. And it was really Because it took me a while to get that this little boy name was actually Mister. Mm -hmm. I thought they were just calling him Mister, <laughs> but that was his name. But it, it tells the tale of uh, Mister was a black boy, Pete was a little Asian boy. Um, they ended up spending the whole summer in um, like the Bronx projects. Mm -hmm. The mom got taken away to jail. She was released. She was thinking the kids would get taken um, in the care. They didn't. They actually managed to kind of rough it through the summer, and it just. You see the tales and the strifes of these two little boys and, and then how they come out. The mom was actually Jennifer Hudson, so it really is a good movie. Skinny Jen? Yeah. She's still skinny? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like her. Um, the next one. This is a two-part series, y'all. Beyond Neverland. It's oh. talking about Michael Jackson, and the, it's coming from the victim's point of view. So they're talking about everything that was going on with these kids, the families, how Michael manipulated them and controlled them and everything, right? After the two-part series came on, then Oprah came on interviewing two of the victims, right, on the HBO special. I don't know if it's going to be on OWN, um, but they'll replay it on HBO. Um, and she sits down and talks with these victims. Now, the killing part with me is I don't mind that Oprah did the interview, right? But where was Oprah when folks was trying to mute R. Kelly? She didn't sit down and interview none of these black girls and talk about their issues and talk about what was going on. But to me, I just feel like she's benefiting somehow, some way from this for her to want to sit down with these victims and really talk about this. Because, she, you know, she's, she's been a victim too, right? Mm -hmm. But I just, I don't, I don't get it. And I just think it's some bullshit a little bit. That she <sighs> We're always sit down very with selective them. with the causes we choose to stand up for. And I forgot what exact issue it was. Maybe it was maybe it was the Kim Fox R. Kelly thing. Uh, it was something else recently that we talked about. And I was just like, why now? Our I think it has to be here. beneficial yeah, to like a every, degree. I think everybody so I think at the end of the day is self-serving. She teamed up an with HBO and own production got some credit. Right. And that's why she did this interview. I don't necessarily think she cares about the goddamn victims. I, I, I question where they're victims. Like, I was watching a post, and again, it's just a post from a random <laughs> nigga, but the way he was talking fast and articulate, it felt like he was talking <laughs> the truth. And he was just talking about how Stay Woke, that all the victims of so-called Michael, all of Michael Jackson's so-called victims are uh, not affluent, but the ones that went to Neverland Ranch and whatever, whatever, were affluent. I mean, the people that went there and had no issues were affluent. He himself said he's been there multiple times and never saw or experienced any of that bullshit. The other thing, and I know that you can victimize people if they're in a lowly state of uh, economic status and it's a little bit easier for target, yeah. but he was saying like, you know, there were 41 or 14 or a double digit number of counts brought against Mike when he was alive yeah. and he was and tried he, and he was found innocent of yeah. all charges yeah. over the course of like a whole long ass investigation. Yeah. So like what changed since he died? Nothing changed. They made they, his victims. Maybe they, like, don't, they don't get, get no more money and no more money. Maybe. Because like, in, in the pieces that I saw, they did say that he paid for everything. Right. So, right. Mm, carry on. Yeah, so I was just like, you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, 
let the man rest in peace. R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, a little bit different because they hear and they can at least somewhat. But did you see a post or article on a woman admitting that she was paid to lie on Bill Cosby? You ain't see that? I'm not surprised, though. Yeah, I'm not surprised either. So I don't want to hear though. that he did it that to 50 women because that's just it's ridiculous. Now, if he even did it to one, shame on him. Yeah. But it's just like, I just don't believe that he did it to 50 oh. women. Not saying that it matters, but if he's getting found guilty on 50 counts or, or 15 counts or 25 counts of shit, and it's like only one of them is true, like what would happen if it was one count, it wasn't a serial behavior, Yeah. and... Maybe she consented, maybe she didn't, but, you know, whatever her account was, it actually happened. And now, you know, 60 years later, it seems like she wants to go forward with it. Would people take it as seriously or would they treat it like that imitation? shit? Be like, eh, it's water under the bridge, the Statue of Liberty. No, they take that shit seriously because it's against a black man. Right. But when, but when a white, white woman man, comes out and confesses, oh, yeah. it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Okay. Um, the last show that you all have got to watch, this is season two, first episode, is The Shop. I talked about it before. With LeBron Breezy? When it came out, yep. And this episode, it had Meek Mill, um, Jamie Foxx, Anthony Davis, um, Gerard Carmichael, um, and it was a football player on there as well, and 2 Chainz. Now he's finally starting to see the momentum shift and who... Can you feel it? Yeah, I mean... who like, he is, though. Yeah, and that's what it is, you know... You know, all the media coverage around me, you know, and now I'm getting a chance to take over, you know, my career and, That's right. and say what I want to say, do what I want to do. So now you see everybody, all right, I see AD changing. You know, everybody telling me, you know, you're growing up, you know, about time you take care, take care of your business, you know, take That's care right. of your career. So now, like, as a player, you know, as a, the CEO of my own business, yeah, I got the power. I'm doing what I want to do and not what somebody tell me. And that's them butterflies, like, uh, knowing that something's going to happen next, not knowing what's going to happen right. next, knowing it's right. going to be a W. Right. Yeah. Don't know what form, how it's going to look when it comes. That's that. That's that feeling. ain't with it at all. That's that feeling. And to talk about the prison system really quick, Meek Mills did, you know, shed some light on it. And a lot of times what he was going back to jail for was violation of parole. Mm -hmm. Just because he had an encounter with a cop. Right. I didn't know that. You can't even encounter a cop with no. a cop? Damn. And he said when he was in jail, he was in jail with mostly lifers and rapists and people who violated parole. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? That's a hell of a mix. Lifers, rapists, as they should be in jail, right? And people who violated parole. So where are all these niggas with these gun charges that are shooting people, murderers? Like, these niggas just walk they in like, the street. Yo, we need y'all in the <laughs> to kill more, nigga. And then when you're done killing, we'll get you in. Oh, here. my God. Yeah. So they talked about that. They talked about changing the narrative, right? So they brought up, like, the Anthony Davis situation, the Colin Kaepernick situation, about how when you are in the league or you in these situations, when you don't do what they want you to do, They'll make a narrative for your ass, but you have to take control of it and change it. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a really good episode. I'm not going to tell y'all too much about it. Check it out. It comes on HBO, I believe, Friday nights. Um, and it's called The Shops, and it's LeBron's show. Um, speaking of LeBron, man, have you been following the NBA? No. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like this nigga's going to make the playoffs, man. Um, Everybody said that his first year. Of course, he's not making the playoffs. Yeah, I don't know if it's. Of course, he's not making the playoffs because it's like he could have made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like you guys West have too high, too high expectations. Making the playoffs after going to the finals nine yeah, years. Yeah, but when in he a row, gets with a new team, a new. I'm asking you team. to be top eight in the conference. That's all I'm asking. When you get with a new team, ma'am, new characters and new chemistry and all that yeah shit. it's not gonna mesh it's not going in on. year one it's I'm just not, not. Going. i'm not going but i will say this man uh if he does not make the playoffs he probably is going to be out of the goat conversation and not saying that he's in it like oh he's better than mike or equal to mike but just saying like oh you know we can at least have a healthy conversation about it based on his stats his stats are better than mike's right but it's just like huh, greatest of all time versus greatest of your time Totally different conversations, and I think that he, if he misses the playoffs, he's not gonna be allowed in that conversation. That's okay, he's the greatest of his time. That's fine. Yeah, all right, that. Okay. <laughs> and now, we are moving on to our favorite topic on this and the third, and that is none other than relationships. relationships. 
So what's topping off our relationship segment this week, Miss Reese? Okay. Hashtag Dear DC. Uh -huh. My boyfriend has blocked me from all his social media accounts. Goddamn. He's in the entertainment industry and says nothing shady is going on, but some of the comments will upset me. Is this BS? And I need to be, con do I need to be concerned or could he actually be on the up and up? Any of your audience ever deal with this? <sighs> What's say you? Like if you got blocked by your guy. I just think being you? blocked, period, is just wrong. Yeah, it just violates your, <laughs> your freedom. So right there, we would have an issue. Mm hmm and if we started out blocked, then I wouldn't have no issue. Right. I could care less. But if we didn't start out that way, then yeah. Um, girl, social media is social media. So you're going to deal with comments. You're going to deal with DMs. You're going to see shit. And it's just how you deal with it. Yeah, and I think that it's personal. You know, at the end of the day, if you was a, a, a thorough ride or die and never expressed concern about posts in the past, he probably wouldn't take this step to try to protect your feelings. Right, because he knows the posts are going to continue because the image and the brand that he has to portray is going to elicit those types of posts. Obviously, you've shown that you can't handle that shit, so he's trying to protect you and y'all as a couple, I think. But uh, at the end of the day, I say just step your gumption up, step your resilience up, and uh, maybe stop trolling the comments. Like, look at the pictures for what they are, and the comments is what the comments is. But I know that's easier said than done. Your man's so. trash. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I thought he was trying to protect their feelings. No, you know, y'all kill me with that. Y'all trying to protect he's their trying feelings. He's to protect their feelings. Stop. He, she wasn't blocked originally. No. So, so he's on some fuckboy shit. Him, nah, something you know, made Tristan him say. Tristan Thompson you know what? needs to block Chloe. Oh, boy, son. I think that this, this nigga is a stand-up guy, man. <laughs> his job is just not conducive to his relationship. And okay, maybe he should job. block those comments, those people who okay, make those comments. Okay, and that's another option. Maybe you turn off your comments. There we go. Problem solved here on this All show. right. Hashtag near DC. Yeah. We had sex and now, this is a good one. We had sex and now she's acting like we're in a relationship. I'm confused. How do we suddenly jump to this level? Is there a polite way I can tell her to dial it down, yet still keep getting what we have going on? What say you, my, my <laughs> sir? <laughs> but what if now she get addicted to what the dick did? That's the question. And y'all should have had this conversation, try to have this conversation up front. <laughs> and if not possible, then you got to stop thinking with your dick. Because I know it's fun to play in the pussy. I know it's fun to get it off and just, ah, oh, you just can abuse this motherfucker, right? But in the long term, when the fucking tires are flat and the windows is bust and the, you know, whatever, she's going to stole your identity, whatever she will do. When she gets to that, because I mean, a chick that gets addicted to dick probably has some type of deficit of what you're feeling. <laughs> and until you realize that, you know, when you stop feeling that void, she's going to have withdrawal and she is going to go for the jugular, nigga. It's not worth it when there's plenty of chicks out there that's like, nigga, I'm just trying to fuck and keep it moving. Get one of them. If you continue to go down the slippery slope, nigga, I hope you have on your skis. Hmm. That's all I can say, Z, because this shit is not huh? going to end well. What say you? I just say there's no polite way. You just got to have a conversation before you sleep with her again. But he didn't. Okay, before, before you sleep, sleep with her, her again. again. Yeah. Like, wait, before because I put this meatloaf in you, let me talk? Like, no, we're not talking. Yeah, no, I'm saying go to dinner. Oh, like a Have new a conversation. Like, I think he's talking about right before. Wait, wait, one sec. No. One sec. <laughs> I had something on my mind. I thought that was too bad. You're talking about candle and romance. Hold hand. And have a car. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's different. Maybe that'll work. I don't do that shit. <laughs> oh, get that shit out the microwave. Okay. <laughs> Last question. Y'all hear him? He don't do that shit. Get that shit out the microwave. Hashtag Dear DC. <laughs> my guy friend confessed his feelings a few hours after my breakup. Not sure what to do because part of the reason I broke up was based on advice my guy friend gave me throughout oh, the relationship. Shit. Now I'm questioning if I should give my ex another chance. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> you stop being susceptible to fuck shit, man. Don't you know? 
Nobody likes you enough to hang around you just because you're that cool. <laughs> if you have gay male friends, that's totally different. If you have niggas that just hang around you and it's just like, yo, hit that, yo, sip that, yo, take, oh, no, 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 just hit that, <laughs> sip that. He's waiting in the weeds for his opportunity to pounce on your pocketbook. I can guarantee that shit. Even if that's not his primary objective. All men. All straight men are not hanging with you <laughs> just because you're that. You're not that. You know you're not that That's cool. And your heart of hearts, <laughs> you know you're not that cool. But Or you're ugly as fuck. And who's really ugly as fuck and having this type of issue where it's like, man, this whole time I've been feeling you. That's not happening. <sighs> this nigga has been plotting and scheming and now his opportunity. Like, this nigga didn't even wait a day. No. He waited a couple hours after he gave you probably terrible relationship advice <laughs> and been running through holes the whole time he's been giving you this terrible relationship advice that man i'm down on bended knee will you be mine fuck out of here but you a goofy for going for that what say you um i don't ask people for advice because i usually don't take it i want to do what i want to do mm. so mm. I, free spirit here on this end you know of the and i i do know that most guys they don't want to just be a friend Ill whatever, intent. whatever so Ill intent you have to, and, but I get you always want to talk to your guy friends about the shit you got going on because you just really want their perspective, you know what I'm saying, to see how to deal with it. Nah. So I think you have to be like, okay, I'm going to take this, Real not this, that. Yeah. I'm a man that was relationship, extra. right. Right, but I don't think you should go back to your ex. Just start over. There's plenty out here, girl. Just find somebody else. And You've start been over. duped. Like, if you go back to your ex, he's going he's, to shit. All yeah, and you're not going to be able to be friends with that guy. No, buddy ass out the picture. Now you got rules and regulations. Yeah, it's just too much. Like, if you can't have a committed relationship and freedom, uh, 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 that's uh, very uh, hard uh, to achieve. Uh, you agree? Uh, Would you agree that that's very hard to achieve? Commitment and freedom. I didn't know they went here. Right? Like, <laughs> until I have that, give us three minutes. Right. <laughs> Free. I am not going. But there are people out there that get it, that understand. Like I'm not in control of your happiness. I can't. If you if you want to fuck around on me, you're gonna do it anyway. No matter how controlling I am, no matter how romantic I am, no matter how much of a good guy or bad guy I am, if you want to do some shit, you're gonna do that shit. So I might as well come to the table like, baby, do that shit that makes you happy. <laughs> All I ask is when I'm not the part of the <laughs> equation that makes you happy. Just let me know. Let you know what? Let me know, like, man, last week was cool. <laughs> this last century was cool. Whatever our duration was, when it's over, just let me know it's over. Don't fuck around. Don't sneak. Don't do this. Don't dip. Don't whip, man. And don't trust no fuck niggas. Conversate. Like, y'all relationship couldn't have been as strong as we would no. have wanted to yeah. be. If, if this nigga was able was to, able get to tear y'all apart. That's just like females that tell be talking to the Duh. guy, like, your girl ain't this, your girl ain't that. Duh. They believe that shit. It's like all they trying to do is get y'all off each other, get what they want from y'all, and yeah, then get on to out. the next one and do that same thing to another relationship. Yeah. And y'all motherfuckers who probably was good for each other now can't be because you... Probably. Met, probably. Not, <laughs> not possibly. I'm not even going to say probably. Possibly we're good for each other. Now we'll never have that authentic, pure us experience because it's always somebody else. In your ear. In your ear. And, and once this happens, it ain't no... Oh, okay, we got back together. Now mm -mm. the trust was restored. That nigga, no. anytime you're not there, he's going to be like, man, you That's got another done. nigga in your ear, ear or another hole associated with your body. Yeah. But um, I think that about wraps us up for this week's episode of This, That, and the Third. <laughs> Literally. We thank y'all for tuning in and turning up for another dope episode. Be sure to tell a friend to tell a friend to check us out on all social media platforms by searching This, That, and the Third with the third spell I, 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 like the Roman numeral three. And you catch us on YouTube anytime by searching Calvin and Reese. And... Well, Watch the Cypher Live. Come on, man. Shout out to Troy Pryor, the yes. Cypher Live. All the creatives in Chicago doing big things. We got a uh, F is for Funny comedy night coming yep, up at the Logan up. Center on the campus of the University of Chicago. So we'll get y'all more information about that. And uh, big things popping, little things stopping, man. So sure. thank y'all. Uh, we love y'all. And we'll check y'all out next time. Once again, it's been a pleasure serving as your host. It's your boy, Calvin Leroy King the third. My lovely co hosts with the Moses. It's Greasy PC, the one and only. And we are the Undisputed King Queen Chicago Podcast. Check, check us, us out. out.